Yeah. Um, now, are there some things as I was walking today, I'm listening to this, um, this podcast, uh, actually, it's an audio book on the immune system. Yeah. And I, I'm still wearing my mask and staying away from people. But I also know, logically, you know, we should have some things that help our body fight. So we should be. So I'm like, maybe being in nature helps me because I can't deal with the people, Dr. Amen. I just can't. I can't. <laughs> I don't like the breathing around me. I'm just I'm just not yeah. ready for all of that. And folks are so reckless and nasty. Ugh. It's absolutely true. I mean, I'm a bit of a germaphobe in that way, but I haven't had the liberty to really lean into that because uh, the work that I do. So I need to be able to see people's faces. I have to get up in their face and look if they look iron deficient or, you know, what's going on. And um, I have also found that the more people breathe on you, you know, sometimes the more your immunity goes up because you've been exposed to stuff. Now that may not be the case with certain kinds of viruses, et cetera, but I will tell you, I haven't been sick in, you know, I don't know, maybe 12 years. Like I just don't get colds. I don't get sick. It's just how my body functions now. All right. So, but you, you, you got the, you got uh, vaccinated and all of that. So does that, how does that work? I did. I did. Um, I felt like it was the responsible thing to do uh, along with, you know, whatever dietary things, lifestyle, all of that, that was there and being cautious. I mean, during the time that, that the, of the, the end times that we were going through, uh, everybody in our staff wore masks. You know, we didn't have people in the space sitting down at that point, all of that. So we, we uh, exercised an abundance of caution because we just didn't know what was going on. Uh, and, and it's the right thing to do. So, but now that um, I feel like we're still in the pandemic, I don't feel like it went away. I was thinking today that, you know, the, all of the variations and all of the, you know, d- different uh, mutations of it. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, cause I knew how to not get the flu or the cold, you know, like I knew how to do that. Yeah. My brain couldn't figure out this COVID thing and I'm still working through it. Right. Where are we now with it in in terms of keeping our immune system as, you know, as big warriors? Because that's, you know, it comes from fighting. They're like they're there to stave off yeah. anything that comes in, got their weapons. Yeah, that's we that's where it is. And, and in that you were talking about the lymphatic system, right, that you were reading about that. Um, you know, the, the lymph is the garbage cans of the body and also gives rise to lots of those really great uh, fighters, you know, the white blood cell fighters, et cetera, you know, there is an opportunity for us to clean those systems, but you know, the heart, the blood has the heart, right. To pump it through, right. We have other things, the stomach, you know, is doing its work, all this other stuff, all the fluids, right. The lungs have uh, motion to it, but the lymph doesn't have a pump, like a rightful pump, except for motion. So as you were saying, you were taking your two walks today, the motion of swinging the arms, the motion of walking, the motion of um, movement is what squeezes the lymph, you know, the muscles and and ligaments squeezing on those areas. So it's really important to do that. Um, That's the emptying of the trash cans of the body. And that way, our immune systems are more stimulated. I'd like us to kind of like, you know, close our eyes before we get up and, you know, cause we don't think about breathing and we don't think about our heart beating. We don't think about those things, but right. to kind of like plug into the, the very life source, right. For mm-hmm. us to just, and, and kind of like go through the body at some point and like this is connected. The knee bone is connected to the, you know, like we, we had that little song as a kid to, right. that connected our body parts, but we don't do that for the inside. And I think, you know, when we put stuff in our mouths, it's so mindless. Like we don't know all of it. Like what, when did the lymph nodes come into play? Like we, what do they even do and why? Like we, when right. do I notice them? And unless they, you know, there's a well, problem. You notice them when they're, yeah. When they're sore you know, under the arms, by the breast, next to the breast, you notice when they feel tender or sore, you notice them in the folds of the, uh, the, the thighs, right next to your land of milk and honey, 
and the thighs, that little fold, you notice when they feel like a little nodule or they're sore. And it, and this tells us that it's cleaning, like something is going on. Uh, we notice it when it's under the jaw and our throat feels sore and we're like, whoa, what's going on? I'm, I might be coming down with something. So we notice it when they're working hard. Um, and you're absolutely right. Like the movement that we do, the cleansing that we do, there are certain kinds of herbs that help us with that. Uh, the water alone, like having about a gallon of water a day just really flushes those no those nodes out. And that way you're getting the most out of it. I mean, if you didn't take your trash out for a week, it would be crazy in your house, you know, in your kitchen, right? I, I guess, you know. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I just did that. Uh, and I was like, what is that smell? I oh the garlic because garlic will will get you like you don't care. I wrapped it in paper and just it just got my whole place lit. I was like, okay, all right, <laughs> damn. Garlic is yes. the best. It is the best, but it's it will smell up your house if you you yeah. know leave it in your garbage and let it let it do that. Um, Absolutely, but that's why some of us don't smell great, you know. And and perfume oh. doesn't need to be the thing. Um, if you've just taken a shower and, you know, by the middle of the day, you're just not fresh, uh, whether it's your mouth, whether it's your body, whether it's your sweat and you, you know, you're smelling a certain way. You're like, wait a minute, I'm not having enough water. That should be what we're thinking of. And our lymph nodes and the, and the glands there, the merocrine cells and all the things that are under these areas are giving off that funk. You know, that smells like <laughs> onion or the garlic. Hard K on there, boy. No, she that's put the hard cute. K. That's a Q. <laughs> <laughs> she put a Q on it. Oh, yeah, okay. It's giving, it's giving, right? And it does smell like onions or garlic. It It's saying, hey, I need to flush out. There's something going on here. Even in my, you know, even with my own kids, like if I, they walk past me, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hold on, partner. Or, you know, my nieces or nephews, I'm like, hold on. Something's, we get, come hold his tea in your hand. Come on and hold this tea and let, and hold a shower. And then let's see what's going on <laughs> after that. Right. Like something's going on. What tea are you giving for the funk with a Q? Uh, two different things, right? Because we need to go deep in the, in the paint. So I'm giving tea talks because I want that flush of kidney, lymph, liver, spleen. Like I, I need everything to kind of squeeze and get juicy and like give up the ghost in there, give the funk, get up off the funk. And then I need some elimination, some movement of the colon, you know, of the small, of the large intestine. I need stuff to move on. That's right after the stomach. I want everything out and that I would use. I love to move it because I want to make sure that, um, everything that I've been eating much like, you know, the whole trash can of the body, it needs to be emptied out. You just, so, are you, are you drinking your water? What are you drinking? I'm drinking water. You know, that's but, all I drink during the show. That's all I actually, I only drink tea and water, tea and water. It's only, only liquids that I take in. Yeah. Um, and, and how often, you know, cause I, I know like, wait, this is, so again, you don't, so you don't drink juice. I don't drink, drink juice. Right. I don't. And I love that. We don't buy juice in our house. I don't drink juice and, and, uh, with our kids, I've said for years, if you want juice, here's the fruit, like eat this fruit, because even drinking juice as part of like your water content, which lots of websites and stuff will say, it's still a lot of sugar. It's just liquid sugar. You've, you've extracted the water and sugar and left the protein and the fiber behind. And then we wonder why we're, you know, our blood sugar or, or, you know, glycemic indexes are bouncing up and down. And so we want to make sure that juice it. That why? Why? Yeah. I used to, I had a juicer. I went and got one of those industrial juicers, you know, to, to do all of the, the carrots and the beets and the oranges and all of that. And, well, I don't and then you had that, that mess. Yeah. The, I don't know, but that. I'm like, you know, it was, it was, it was a lot of work and I, you know, I ain't got the time to do all of that work and yeah. it's just easier for me to drink water and tea. And, right. and I'm happy with it. So I, I don't just mind the juicer. In fact, I want us to do like a whole thing in Nubia where I pull out my favorite juicer or two. And um, my juicer is like a Ferrari. You know what I'm saying? It's not these on, on market kind of, you know, I if you're going to do it, you need the right kind of juicer. Um, you need 
the right kind of vegetables and combinative patterns, right? You need to combine food, combine, combining, especially when juicing is really important. You can't just throw every old thing in there. You've put in beets and you put carrots and you put apple. These are all sugar, right? So like you have to balance these things out. So we'll do a whole thing in Nubia. I hope so. Um, and I, I can't wait. Somebody was like, when is the, the, uh, the tea, the recipe book coming out? I was thinking about you this morning because, you know, um, I, I moved away from the, the caffeine because I'm, I'm trying to get, get it out of my system because my eye was jumping again. And I was like, oh, that means I, I'm doing too <laughs> Don't much. Blame doing too much. Don't I'm blame blaming, I'm blaming the matcha and the, and the cincha and all of the green tea that I drink. So yeah. I was like, um, so now I start my day with Octavia, right? Yeah. Which is, you know, and it's got that purple, that pea flower, the, 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 all of the stuff in it. And I was thinking about you because, you know, I've, I've, I've been drinking tea a long time, you know, yeah. but you have figured out the alchemy of th- like the, the, the hibiscus with the, this and the, that, like, you, you know, what to put together uh-huh. to make it work where somebody would just, you know, here's the uh, butterfly pea flower and they'll <laughs> sell that to you just as a tea or here's hibiscus and you can make some sorrel, of course, but you have put the elements together that, you know, make it do what it do in the body. And I, I was, I was marveling at that today because it oh. tastes great. And, and I know everything in that, cause I put it in this canister, everything in this canister and it smells amazing. Oh, that's also, really they work together. I know you put them together for a purpose. Where, where do you get that? Is that uh, just- that's, that's the direct benefit of my, of spending time with the elders. And this is what we, when we get back to talking about the village and where you belong in the village, I mean, this life of being an herbalist uh, is something I would never have chosen. And in fact, I ran from it for decades. I was just like, I'm not doing this. Like, I'm not doing what you all are doing. You know, my, my dad, my grandmother, you know, all these, I'm like, you can't keep me in here. (laughs) And then here I am, you know, and having spent that time, there is something to be said for unbroken chains of ancestral information. And my job is really just to be a cultural custodian. My job is to learn, to know how to use all this stuff and be ethical in presenting it to people in the way that they need it. You know, not Mm -hmm. just throwing stuff together, but using those lessons. So I lean on the unchanging hand of the ancestors. Like I can't, you know, I don't take any any uh, credit in that it's, it's the, um, it's the divinity in them that they were so kind to give to me, especially when I was acting like the worst teenager and didn't want to learn it. They, they hung in there 